Hey, I'm Amelia Mosley, and on today's BTN special, we're talking about civics and citizenship. Here's what's coming up. We check out what democracy actually means and a look back at the history of voting. But first up, we're going to learn about something called the Magna Carta. It's one of the most important legal documents ever written. And while it's pretty old now, you can still find traces of it in modern laws around the world. Check it out. Throughout history, there have been some great leaders. Men and women remembered and admired for their strength, courage and wisdom. And then there was this guy. King John ruled England between 1199 and 1216, but he wasn't known as a good king. What? In fact, King John the Bad is what people still call him. They don't call me that. They don't call me that. Oh, no, sire. For the most part, John's remembered as being, well, not very nice. He was known as cruel and spiteful and jealous and vain. But that was okay because he was never really supposed to have any power. John was the youngest son of a big royal family. But his older brothers kept dying. One of them, Richard, managed to rule for a good 10 years. They called him King Richard Lionheart and he was loved and respected by his people. But then he died and as the only brother left, John took the throne. Early in his reign, John managed to lose a lot of his empire in northern France and he spent the next decade fighting expensive wars to try and win it back again. To pay for that, he taxed his barons, the rich people who were in charge of his lands. Is this all there is? Uh, yes, sire. This isn't going to be enough, is it? No, sire. Well, we're going to have to raise the taxes again. Are you sure that's a good idea? Yeah. Why? Well, you've already raised them 11 times. The barons are revolting. <gasps> I know they're revolting. That Robert Fizzwalks, he smells like horse dung. <gasps> no, they're ready to revolt. They're unhappy with you, sire. Why would they be unhappy? Well, you are taking their money and their property. Ah, Sir William. Have you come to give me money for my war? Uh, no, sorry, no. Ah, oh, well, that's all right then. I'll just take your castle and your land. What? You can't do that. <laughs> I can do what I like. I'm the king. Guards, arrest him. Oh, I love being king. By 12.15, the barons had had enough. I've had enough of this. This is getting ridiculous. He stole my castle. And he stole my abbey. But then he sold it back to me. We need to do something. We'll form an army, take over London, and force him to listen to us. Yeah! And that's what they did. On the 15th of June, they met at a place called Runnymede to negotiate. The barons made the king agree to a bunch of promises like not raising taxes without the consent of the barons, respecting the rights of the church, and not punishing people, imprisoning them or taking their property away without a trial by jury. The rules were written down in a document which later became known as the Magna Carta. Of course, King John being King John broke most of those promises and a civil war broke out. But later kings would reissue the Magna Carta and it eventually became British law. To many, it represented something really important, that kings weren't all powerful and that their subjects had rights that had to be respected. The Magna Carta helped to inspire Thomas Jefferson when he wrote the American Declaration of Independence. And after World War II, some of its principles made their way into the UN's Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This Universal Declaration of Human Rights may well become the international Magna Carta of all men everywhere. You can still find its influence in Australian law, and there's a copy from 1297 kept in Parliament House. 800 years on, the Magna Carta is still seen as a document that's worth celebrating. It made people think differently about power and rights and even earned a not-so-great king an important place in history. 
Now, having a say about who runs our country is super important. And the reason we get a say is because of something called democracy. Check it out. Long, long ago in ancient Greece, the people of Athens were in danger. Did you hear the Persians are planning to attack us? Yeah, maybe we should do something about it. Let's fight. OK. But not everyone in the city wanted to. I'm not too keen on this war thing. I wish we could have a say. Maybe we can. To give the people more of a say on big decisions like this, the Greeks came up with something they called democracy. Democracy is a mashup of two Greek words, demos meaning people and kratos meaning power or rule. So together it basically means rule of the people. OK, here's the idea. We let people vote on issues and then you guys can have a say on whatever affects you. Yay! Well, they didn't really mean everyone. Oh, wait. We won't let women vote? Slaves vote, or anyone too poor. Yes! That still left thousands of men, and all of them were allowed to attend meetings and vote on any issues that were important to them. The ancient Greeks were some of the first people to experiment with better ways of leading their people. While their system was far from fair, it was a pretty revolutionary idea, while it lasted. As time went on, new rulers took over, things changed, and democracy kind of died out for a while. By the Middle Ages, monarchies had become popular. That's where kings and queens rule, and the people don't get a say. But an important document called Magna Carta evened things up a little by promising people some very basic rights. And slowly, over the next few hundred years, the idea of democracy started to take hold again. Fast forward to today, and democracy is the most popular form of government around the world. But it works very differently to how it did in ancient Greece. In Australia, we have something called a representative democracy. That means that unlike ancient Greece, where everyone went to meet and vote on laws, we elect a representative to do that for us. I'll represent you. No, vote for me. I know what you want. They're our politicians, and they represent us in Parliament. It's their responsibility to keep in touch with their voters and make sure their voices are heard on a national level. I'm the politician that's right for you. I'll make this world a better place. Some really important values also form the basis of our democracy here in Australia. We're guaranteed the freedom to express our views without getting into trouble, equal rights for people from all different backgrounds, and the right to justice and a fair and independent trial. So that's democracy in Australia. But democracy isn't the only form of government out there. Some countries, like Saudi Arabia and Qatar, are an absolute monarchy. That's when someone born into a royal family has complete control over the people, and all laws and decisions are made by that person or family. A dictatorship is another form of government. It's similar to an absolute monarchy in that one leader has power over a country but they usually aren't royal. Instead, dictators often take control of a country by force. North Korea and Zimbabwe are considered dictatorships. In these countries, people usually don't have a lot of rights and often aren't looked after very well by their rulers. Australia's system of democracy, on the other hand, is designed to have the people's best interests at heart. And while it may not always work perfectly, we're lucky to live in a country where we have the right to voice our opinions and the freedom to make a difference. Finally today, we're going to take a look at the history of voting in Australia. There have been some big changes over time about who is allowed to vote. Let's find out more. Twas the night before the election, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, except for one girl who was having a bit of a sook. I don't care. I don't even want to vote. It's not like one vote's going to change anything anyway. I am the ghost of voting past. Yeah, that voice is super annoying. Can you cut it out? Okay, fine. 
Okay, Mr. Ghost of Voting Past, why should I care about voting? Well, voting gives you a say about what happens in Australia, and you should be thankful that you even get a vote. Here, come with me. With all the cool things we could do with time travel, you're making me vote? Uh, yes. Come on, give it a try. Excuse me, I'd like to vote. <laughs> Give me a break. Voting is not for women. Sucks, doesn't it? Things weren't so good for women back then. That's right. In Australia in the 1800s, most women didn't have much of a say in how things were run. It seems pretty ridiculous now, but back then, some people thought women were too emotional and not smart enough to understand politics. That's why in the late 1800s, many women started to demand change. Women protesting for voting rights are known as suffragettes. Suffrage means the right to vote for politicians to represent you. Suffragettes debated, wrote articles and petitions, protested and even faced arrest. And eventually, it paid off in Australia. In 1902, Australia became the first country in the world to give women both the right to vote in federal elections and the right to be elected to federal parliament. But it took another nearly two decades for all of the states to follow suit. OK, what year is this? Surely I'd be able to vote by now, right? Give it a try, but don't get your hopes up. Hi. Hi. Um, just a quick question. What background are you? Aboriginal Australian. Sorry, you're gonna have to leave. What? That's so wrong. Yeah, it sure is. Let's get out of here. Even though women were finally in the voting club by 1903, Indigenous Australians were still left out. In fact, it was only in 1949 they were finally given the right to vote in federal elections. But even then, it was only for those who'd served in the army. It wasn't until 1962 that the government finally gave all Indigenous Australians the right to vote in federal elections. One last stop. OK, I'd better be able to vote now. You'll see. I'm here to vote. Sure, no problem. Um, can I just have your age? Are you over 21? No, I'm 18. Sorry, you're too young. Please, I've waited so long. You're too young. Yeah, voting age was 21 until 1973. Ugh, just take me home. Oi, that's my thing. <sighs> well, that was depressing. Yeah, but it really makes you appreciate that vote of yours now, doesn't it? Definitely. And I think I might just vote tomorrow. By the way, Australia is one of a handful of countries that uh, you sort of have to vote in. It's the law. You get fined if you don't. It's been that way since 1924. Well, you could have just said that from the beginning. And that's it for our civics and citizenship special. If you'd like to find out more or would like teacher resources on this topic, then just head to our website. I hope you've enjoyed the show and I'll see you soon. Bye.